Welcome to the first instalment of Video B from BeadJack.com. I am Charles McManamy, and in this instalment I am looking at Codemaster's latest race of fuel. According to the PR for fuel, it has been recognised by Guinness World Records as having the largest purple area in a console game, which they claim is over 14,000 km squared. But this raises an important question about fuel. Will it be a case of quantity over quality? There are several quality aspects to fuel, including a decent range of vehicles, which includes, but is not limited to, bikes, quads, muscle cars, and monster trucks. While the game world is vast, there are quick travel options making it less tedious getting around. This includes the ability to select single player events from the menu once they have been found and unlocked. The weather can play a major part in events, as storms cause environmental damage, leading to additional obstructions and hazards suddenly appearing. Single player events are normally quite short, lasting no more than 5 minutes. However, there are exceptions to this, and some events can last longer. As you would expect, online multiplayer is present, which in fuel is brought to 16 players on the Xbox 360. In addition to racing online versions of single player events, you can also create your own races using the inbuilt race editor to create custom races. Unlike some games, they did not have any trouble getting into ranked matches, and most of the time got straight into a lobby with at least 5 people already present. Overall, I found the multiplayer element of fuel to be a fairly solid and enjoyable experience. These elements combine to make fuel a game with a solid core. However, there are numerous flaws in fuel that combine to make playing fuel a less than stellar experience. The main flaw in fuel is that the game seems to lack a defined goal aside from completing the events within the game. While career events help you work towards unlocking new areas and cars respectively, I did not feel any satisfaction when I unlocked a new area or car, and found the whole experience quite apathetic. It would have been nice if there had been some storyline or career structure in fuel in order to overcome this flaw. The second significant flaw is the AI which is sometimes fine, but other times in races can cause an opponent to storm ahead, only to inexplicably slow down allowing you to overcome what should be an unassailable lead. This can make winning races sometimes seem scripted and due to luck rather than skill and equipment. The final major flaw is the game world itself, which while vast is very repetitive. One example of this is damaged broken trees, as you can pass what is obviously the same model numerous times in a short distance. This flaw also applies to other elements of the environment, though to a lesser extent. This left me feeling that I would have preferred a smaller but more varied game world. There are also numerous relatively minor flaws in fuel. These include the GPS being dodgy, as it often sends you the wrong way or asks you to go by impassable routes, typically through deep water causing you to die and respawn. The car view could also be improved, as there is no reverse view. Instead, if you want to look behind your car, you have to move the camera around the car, which is more than inconvenient in a race. The race editor, while a nice feature, is limited, and most options can only be accessed when setting up an online multiplayer race. This is frustrating when lots of the options such as weather and time of day are things you want to know the effect of before you start the race. While none of these flaws are in themselves game-breaking, taken together they greatly detract from fuel, vastly decreasing my enjoyment of the game. Given all these factors, how does fuel rate as a whole? I have to say, fairly average. In terms of style of driving, the closest game I've played is Flat Out Ultimate Carnage, which I personally found to be a much more enjoyable experience, despite it being a remake of an original Xbox title. On the open world side of things, Test Drive Unlimited and Burnout Paradise are both much better implemented, with the only significant advantage Fuel having over them is being its size. There will be people who enjoy Fuel, and its sheer size is a great selling point, but for me, I found the game slightly tedious and repetitive, with little to grab me and make me want to come back for more. While Fuel is not a bad game, it is not a good one either, and deserves no more than a mediocre 6.5. Given that there is no shortage of high quality races around, I recommend giving Fuel a miss and going for one of them instead.